Goku and Crew ascend into the realm of gods, with Goku having his own unique form too. However, this leads to the creation of Goku Black in an alternate timeline. We'll be covering all that more in this ninth part of What If Goku Was Like Broly. Upon seeing Goku Black, Goku immediately realizes that he needs to finish this quickly. He's not sure if this guy just looks like him or actually is him in some way. But whatever the case may be, this kind of seems like Cell all over again, as in, there's a villain with power similar to his, and he can't just stand around and do nothing. Goku obviously does want to have a good fight with him, but at the same time, he realizes the danger here. But first, he gauges Goku Black's power and realizes that's actually the case. Somehow, some way, this guy does have his powers, which is immediately a red flag. He can't let him grow any further. There is a very brief battle, and Goku ends up being the winner. But when Goku's about to land the kill shot, a portal appears, dragging Goku Black back through. Thankfully, he doesn't destroy the time machine, but it still does need to be refueled. He's too preoccupied and injured to even think about that. But as he's pulled back through the portal, something unexpected happens. Basically, on instinct, Goku powers all the way up. The portal is only here to pull Goku Black back into it. But Goku tries something that he doubts is going to work, although it ends up actually working. Through sheer power alone, he rips open the portal again, following Goku Black through it as it closes. Again, this was purely off of instinct. He didn't actually plan to do this, nor did he think it would work. Without realizing it, Goku just ripped through time and space on accident. Not just breaking dimensions, but breaking timelines. And the hole in time doesn't close. Beerus is there nearby, and he freaks out. Goku's going to destroy everything, but Whis says he's got it. He flies up to the portal and looks through it, seeing both Gokus there equally confused. Whis asks Goku if he wants to come back, but Goku says he's going to finish this on his own. Although Whis warns him, don't do that again. That's way too dangerous. But as he closes up the portal, he sees someone else appear nearby. Zamasu teleports in next to Goku Black. Surprised to see Goku's also here too. Whis notes this, and Zamasu realizes he was just spotted. He shouldn't have teleported in just now. This immediately prompts Beerus and Whis to go speak with Goasu. They put two and two together really quickly. Trunks spends time with Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa as Bulma refuels the time machine. Looks like they're just going to have to wait for Goku to come back. So, right off the bat, events are already altered. Goku never met Zamasu in his timeline because of Goku Black's involvement. Thanks to the time ring, this doesn't affect either Zamasu or Goku Black in the future. And with Beerus and Whis checking in on Zamasu, basically by default, this means the present timeline is safe. Zamasu starts to heal Goku Black. But once Goku realizes exactly what's happening, he attacks. And Goku Black did get a good amount of healing from that, but not fully. His rage is overflowing too. This isn't what he planned, especially with him interrupting Zamasu's healing. To make things worse, Beerus and Whis now know about Zamasu's involvement. Goku Black tries to hold off Goku, and eventually transforms into his own new form. Well, it's not entirely new. He goes into Rose, with his power being equivalent to Goku's. Even though his hair color is different, it pretty much is the same to him. Goku can tell the form is divine, but also is similar to his, it has that same red lightning around it. And it seems that it's growing with rage as well. The fight intensifies, and both continue growing during the fight itself. Goku Black is now growing much stronger, but Goku is also growing too. It's an unstoppable force versus an immovable object. Their clashes alone are threatening everything. Thankfully, they're holding back with key control, but still. This fight is putting everything at stake, and they're not even at their full potential yet. Goku Black is clearly on the losing end, and he's starting to get desperate. Goku's own growth is countering Goku Black's. Although, Goku Black is still growing at an insane rate here. First of all, it's Goku Black, that's what he does normally. But it's combined with the fact that Goku's kind of like Broly in this scenario. So, if it wasn't already clear, this guy's growing like crazy. As that fight goes on, Zamasu tries to figure out what to do. He wants to go in and heal Goku Black, because if he fully heals him, while Goku's wearing himself out too, that's gonna give Goku Black a clear advantage. Plus, Goku can't escape here like Trunks did. There's no time machine. Sure, he might be able to rip through space and time again, but it seems like Whis didn't want that, and maybe Goku will actually listen. Maybe. Point being, there's a high chance they can kill Goku here, but Zamasu just needs an opening. They also have one last resort, but he's not gonna jump to that right away. He's about to Kai Kai towards Goku Black, but he feels a hand grab his arm. He turns back and is immediately met with a punch to the face. So strong that it snaps his neck on impact. Zamasu catches his footing, grabs his head, and puts it back into place, regenerating completely from this. The man says that was kind of freaky. Looks like this guy has some sort of regeneration. Zamasu's jaw drops when he realizes who it is. And Goku senses the energy enter the fight as well, and he's somewhat confused but mainly happy. There's an ally here. It's Kami. How did he get here? Goku Black stops fighting as well, confused as to how another person is here. This guy doesn't exist in this timeline. Kami knows that his future self never got involved and was able to help like this. So, to make it up to Trunks and everyone else in this timeline, as well as his future self, he's going to rectify that. Over the past few years, he's grown very knowledgeable, besides growing stronger too. Goku might be one of the strongest in the multiverse, if not the strongest. But Kami is one of the smartest people in the multiverse. His pursuit of knowledge led him to learn a bunch of new techniques. His magic has grown so potent he could hop timelines as well. He just had to locate Goku's energy, which wasn't really hard. That's kind of insane. Goku didn't realize he could be sensed from another timeline. But Kami says he has more tricks up his sleeve. 
He thought Goku might want some help, so he came along just in case. He also let Zamasu know that he won't be able to do anything any longer. Right about now, Beerus and Whis are talking with Goasu and Zamasu. From his timeline, that is. He notices the time ring Zamasu has as well. None of that's going to affect him, and it seems like it's just these two that need to be defeated, so this should be a quick fix. Angrily, Zamasu teleports over to Goku Black, but Kami teleports him back to him. What, he's trying to heal his ally? It's not going to be that simple. Kami then shows him how simple it really can be, holding his hand out, healing Goku remotely and pretty much instantly, as well as fixing his clothes, of course. Goku's excited that Kami's here, as well as seeing these new techniques he has. He thanks him for the help, but he's got this fight on his own. Maybe he can handle that Zamasu guy. Kami says it's not a problem. So a fight between Zamasu and Kami breaks out. Zamasu attacks, but he's not fast enough or strong enough to do anything to Kami. Kami notes that he's definitely powerful by Akai's standards. He has studied and trained under Shin and Kibito for a bit as well, hence why he knows about things like the Time Ring, as well as everything else Zamasu is using in this fight. Zamasu forms a blade around his hand. Kami thinks that's pretty interesting. He copies that on a whim and uses it against Zamasu, slicing him in half, but he instantly regenerates. Interesting. Seems this guy's immortal. Zamasu, of course, is infuriated. Kami should know his place, especially him being a god attacking another god. He's so much lower in terms of hierarchy. Why is he acting like he could dictate everything? Kami could be asking the same thing. After all, he's guardian of Earth. And look where they are right now. This is Earth. Maybe not the one from his timeline, but still, he's the guardian of it. Years ago, before he was in his prime again, he always felt like he couldn't really do much. At a certain point, opponents became so strong that he couldn't do anything against them, even if he did want to help. The most he could do is provide support for everybody and maybe train them a bit. But now, with him having had this power for so long, he's come to really like what he's capable of. He could be a lot more proactive. He could protect Earth and the universe as a whole. And more importantly, he feels like he's making changes. And it's all thanks to Goku. It's definitely part of his influence and everyone else around him. Maybe Zamasu could learn a thing or two from him. Zamasu's a god fighting mortals, trying to destroy them in a misguided act. Kami is the one fighting for mortals, protecting them and ensuring that they grow, as is the duty of a god like himself. This fans the flames of Zamasu's rage even further. First this lowly god attacks him, and now he's lecturing him? Who does he think he is? Zamasu knows his physical and magical power can't do anything to Kami at this point and Goku Black's gonna lose any moment now. But thankfully they have one last trump card. Kami was ready to seal Zamasu, and he then sees Zamasu swap his earring. Although, he keeps a cool head. He knows exactly what this is, and realizes that the two of them are fusing. Goku's about to land a finishing blow on Goku Black once more. But Goku Black is then pulled away, realizing that the fusion has begun. And he smirks. This is an act of desperation, but it's a good idea to do this right now. Zamasu and Goku Black combine, creating Fuse Zamasu. Goku then lands near Kami and Kami explains what happened. Zamasu sends a bunch of attacks down to Goku, and Kami quickly throws up a barrier, blocking all of them. Goku asks Kami why he's so calm, and Kami could say the same thing about Goku. Well, Goku's confident enough that he could fight this guy, but Kami lets him know that Zamasu is immortal. And with the two fused together, that means this fusion probably is partially immortal as well, if not fully. He's not entirely sure, but the reason he's pretty calm right now is because he knows how to undo this. He saw it coming too. He knows the Kais wear those Patara earrings regardless, but he thought Zamasu might get desperate and use that as a last resort. He tells Goku to watch closely. Amidst his training, he learned this on a planet called Yardrat. He lifts a hand up and then widens it, as if he's ripping something apart. As Zamasu's sending down even more attacks, he's then split into two again. Goku Black and Zamasu are back to normal. He tells Goku this is called Four Spirit Fission. He's been to Namek, the Sacred World of Kais, Yardrat, a bunch of places. There's even another method of fusion that he learned about from the Metamors, thanks to spending some time in Otherworld as well. Wow, looks like Goku has a lot to catch up on. His training under Whis has been great, but it looks like Kami has kept up a bunch. Especially in terms of knowledge, Goku thinks Kami's a completely different person. All that training and studying definitely paid off. Zamasu quickly tries to fuse again, confused as to what happened because that fusion should have been permanent. How did it just get undone like that? But as he fumbles for his earring, Goku then snipes it, then does the same to Goku Black, breaking both Patara earrings. Goku then powers back up and goes to fight Goku Black once more. Zamasu has no clue of what to do, but before he could even act, he sees Kami generate a weird container in his hands, and then preparing a new technique. He tells Zamasu this container is actually made of Kachin, definitely not something that will break easily, and he'll make sure it's in good hands once he finishes the sealing. Wait, sealing? What's he talking about? Kami then performs a Mafuba, perfectly executing it and sealing Zamasu away. He looks up in the air and sees two beams in the sky, one bluish-green, and one with a hot pink color. Kami enjoys the fireworks as Goku's beam engulfs Goku Blacks, creating a powerful explosion as they collide, and then Goku's beam swallows everything whole destroying Goku Black's attack and Goku Black himself. Goku lets out some breath. He had to push himself a lot there, but it was a fun fight. He never actually figured out who Goku Black is, but Kami knows. He grabs on the container holding Zamasu in it and reads all of his thoughts and memories, 
That's another Goku from another timeline. That kind of bums Goku out. So he just had to destroy his own body? Well, Kami says that's not even the worst of it. That's a Goku from an alternate timeline. And Goku narrowly avoided that future. The timeline Goku Black originally is from is beyond saving now. But Goku was able to save his own and protect Trunks' timeline, even if it's in bad condition. Kami teleports himself and Goku back to the past. But Kami tells Goku he should be more careful. If he's so strong that he could travel through time with sheer power alone, he really needs to watch how he uses his strength. And Goku kind of knows that. He kind of did that on a whim and was surprised it worked. But it's more so a testament to how much he's grown as well. Beerus and Whis return, and Zamasu didn't do anything yet, but is now under watch by Gowasu. They know for a fact that Zamasu is involved, although this Zamasu wasn't filled in yet. Gowasu's gonna keep an eye out. Beerus and Whis also get the rest of the info from Kami. Beerus isn't really too fond of Kami traveling through timelines, but at least he did it the right way. He wasn't making a time machine, and he wasn't ripping open space-time with his bare hands. Plus, even though he's very low in the hierarchy, he is a divine being, so Beerus will look the other way. He traveled the right way, and he sort of has clearance for it. At least, way more than Goku and Trunks do. Trunks enjoys his time back in the past too, and he's glad that Goku solved it that quickly. But Kami thanks him because if anything, Trunks saved this timeline too. Goku and Kami stop Goku Black and Zamasu in the future. But without Trunks' help, they wouldn't have known about Zamasu in this timeline, and the same tragedy would have happened here. Trunks got to see Gohan a bit over this time too, and he admires how much Gohan's grown. He's kept up with his training, mainly thanks to Goku never dying here and the other Saiyans being around, but more importantly he's thriving. He has a family and he achieved his dream of being a scholar. It's a bit bittersweet for Trunks. It's a shame future Gohan never got to see this. He never got this far in his life, nor did he achieve his goals. More notably, he never got to tame that power. But this Gohan at least got to do that. He achieved his dreams, and he was able to take control of his life and his power. Even though future Gohan might have not made it, still, his influence is here. Trunks wouldn't be alive without him, and by extension, no one would be alive without Trunks coming back in time. Even though future Gohan died far too soon, he did die with a purpose. And Trunks is just glad his timeline is safe and he could return. Trunks thanks everyone once more and goes back home. And with that, we'll leave off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part? And what's going to happen next? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.